this could well be the final update for this project, barring some last minute big idea. I'd been working on a buzz bomber design to help populate the build with badniks, and I'd created something that I was quite happy with, but while I was experimenting with positioning it, I noticed something that could spoil my efforts. The tile with clip I was using to attach the abdomen appeared to be colliding with the droid body I was using for the thorax when rotated forward. I knew that some rounded elements in the studio would appear slightly larger than their physical counterparts, but I had noticed the tendency for the tail of my prototype to break away when rotating it. It was difficult to tell by eye, so I got my magnifying glass out for a closer look, and found that the tile did appear to make contact with the body when rotated in one direction, but not the other. If I flipped the body on the longitudinal axis, it seemed I'd be able to rotate the abdomen further round toward the stud, but not far enough back to straighten it out. If I flipped the body on the lateral axis and connected the abdomen to the other bar, I'd have plenty of space to rotate, but the arm bars were too far away from the abdomen to connect the sides of the thorax here. So if the tile with clip wasn't suitable for connecting the abdomen, then could I find a better alternative? There weren't many suitable looking elements with clips in studio, most would place the abdomen too far away. The best I could do was pairing an arm with a modified plate, which held the abdomen close to the thorax, but there were still limitations in the way it looked and moved. The tile with clip really looked the best candidate. Would it really be so bad if it didn't quite fit correctly? I decided to keep it, and the next session got a better look at my bus bomber in its proper colours. I'd already chosen one location for a buzz bomber, but I felt adding a second would be nice, maybe somewhere around the floating platforms. As there's currently only one unusable dark brown Technic brick, it'd have to be suspended higher, so it took a few attempts to find a place where the wings wouldn't be clipped by the platforms. With a place selected, I felt it was a little unbalanced with badniks around section 2, so I moved one of the motobugs further into section 1 but this meant having to move over the checkpoint, which didn't really look right so close to the spike pit, so I had to rework the terrain to move over the sunflower. Another Green Hill Zone badnik is the Neutron, a stealthy lizard that'll pop out and blast you with energy balls. This has also been represented in LEGO, but its body's kind of wide and square. I did like the head and tail though. There was only one other Neutron mock I could find, which made good use of a neck bracket to slim it down, so I started with this as a source part. While Neutrons do have large eyes, the LEGO Neutron's eyes were kind of comically large for what I was aiming for, so I searched for some alternatives, settling on the bar with light cover. I may need to draw some eyes on them though. Attaching a neck bracket to a minifigure is fairly simple, but this was going to be less so. My first thought was a Technic pin with bar, but the pin wouldn't be a snug fit in the neck hole. The mock Neutron passes a bar through the neck hole and sandwiches the bracket between elements, so I tried this with a toe ball joint, which wasn't a bad start, but I wanted the studs for building off to be over the legs. I tried a couple of other elements, but it seemed the bar inserted into the head might collide with the bars from the eyes, so I thought it might be better to turn the neck bracket around and attach it to the tail section instead. I did wonder whether there may be another way to attach legs to the body, but I couldn't come up with anything that would give me bars at a suitable angle. After creating a very square looking body, I tried adding some shape with round tiles, but they still looked too flat. An element from the Nexo Knights theme came to mind, used as shoulders for the robots. I really liked the way these looked on the Neutron, but finding a way to add these to a body with the head, legs and tail wasn't going to be easy. I tried all sorts of elements, including croissants and sausages, with nothing coming together in a usable way, but then I remembered I hadn't yet tried the simple jumper plate. A pneumatic T-piece held the shoulders too high above the legs, and despite my best efforts, I couldn't find a way of lowering them closer. I began searching for alternative source parts for the body, starting with the droid body I'd used for the buzz bomber, which I could attach a head and front shoulders to, but I couldn't really see a way to attach the rear shoulders or legs. I tried several more elements before giving up for the night, spending the weekend working on several prototypes, none of which I really liked. The closest I got was using a video camera shaped brick, though this still felt a little wide, but I'd had an idea to thin it down. 
Using rigid hose pieces, which I'm happy to cut down to any length I need, I could join shoulders together and clip the head and tail to them, then use very short hoses to attach the legs to the underside of the shoulders. The first effort was too tall and awkward looking, and turning the legs over didn't make much of a difference, nor did turning the shoulders on their sides, which also spread the legs too wide. But what if I combined this method with the neck bracket I'd used earlier? Finally, it looked as though I was getting somewhere, so I grabbed what parts I had available and put together a physical prototype. It had technically wound up wider than LEGO's version, but I was much happier with the less boxy shape. With the design finalised, I needed a way to attach the Neutron to the main build. The clips on the legs were the only connection point available, so I'd need a bar somewhere, but I wanted it to be discreet. I tried out a modified plate attached directly to the front of the facade, which worked fine, but embedding the plate in the facade looked just that little bit better. The next session I was able to build another correctly coloured buzz bomber, as well as a mostly correct neutron, aside from the eyes, which I haven't been able to get hold of in the UK. Even though my prototype went together well, my newly coloured model didn't seem to want to fit together. The digital design did show that the shoulder pads only just collided with the neck bracket, but it made no sense that the first prototype went together fine. I did manage to cram it together in the end, but it got me questioning whether I needed to rework the design again. <laughs>